quick fun project getting that uh, south window done yeah it was fun one of the most fun parts of the build so far i think mm -hmm. it looks amazing good morning y'all well it's a chilly morning out here today so i'm out here kind of just surveying any kind of damage or whatnot yesterday we were getting some very strong winds as you can see it's knocked over some things it's knocked over uh, one of our ladders our pail that we're using for sponging water onto the dome got blown over jessica the other day had been sorting out bottles to start our bottle bricks with those winds we had yesterday i'm a little scared to see the shape they're in i just hope nothing has broken because uh, we just kind of left them out. So <laughs> cross your fingers, y'all. Let's go check on it. You know, for as strong of winds as we were getting yesterday, I'm really kind of shocked that not only are none of these bottles broken, but they're also pretty intact. So I'm gonna start picking these up and actually trying to put together some bottle bricks. At least try cutting them up. And then Jess can kind of put them together. She'll be the one kind of like putting them in place. So she's got a, a vision in mind. I'm not gonna get in the way with that. I'm just gonna help, just gonna help facilitate the vision. But uh, I'm a little nervous. This is maybe my first time cutting glass. Let me show you the new tool I picked up. I'm new to all this over here. So this will be my first time utilizing the saw. Yeah, you know, I just put the blade in. Looks like we're good. Before I actually cut up any of the bottles that Jess set aside, I'm gonna do sort of like a test run on a practice bottle, just to get a feel for the tool and how it cuts and everything like that. So since I'm cutting glass, take some precautions, got a mask, eyewear, some hearing protection. All right, first cut in, uh, not too bad. I think I uh, missed the mark a little bit. See my line there is a little bit off, so I'm gonna have to figure out how to get kind of a fairly accurate uh, hit on that line. It was pretty close, but uh, that was good. I got a good feel for it. Now maybe I'll give it a shot with one of Jess's bottles. So I'm pleased with how that first cut went. Uh, I just definitely need to keep the cut straighter. So I'm gonna take the guard off and I'm gonna try it without it. I'm also gonna utilize this little guide here just to see if I can get a real nice straight cut. All right, I think we got it. This second cut looks really nice. Really nice and straight. That guide will help me get it just where I need it. I think every time, so I won't have to keep measuring. I'll just run the bottles through one after the other, then we can get to putting them together. So I think that went real quick. Just took a few minutes, went through all those bottles. Nice. Is this not a nice, pretty nice work area for you? Yeah, it's good. Do you want any gloves for that? Got some of those nitrile gloves. Oh, maybe that's a good idea. Inspector Crusoe says he's got to check your work. <laughs> he says he wants these bottles sparkling by the end of the day. Careful, man. Careful, don't sniff that glass. Got some sharp edges here. So never let it be said that uh, Jim won't jump in and do some cleaning. I know this can't be a pleasant job, so I come out and help her finish this off real quick. Or do you want to finish the cleaning? She wants, uh, you got a plan with these bottles, but you're going to need to do it uh, kind of soon, right? Mm -hmm. could, be a, could be a little bit of a process. I guess that's the one thing about bottles that have been sitting for a while, like they could get kind of nasty. Remember there's one bottle, I think there's one bottle over there somewhere where a rat might have died in there. Oh, what? So I don't know if that ever got cleaned or whatnot. There's a dead rat in there. Well, I mean, not that you wouldn't recognize it as a dead rat. It might have gotten liquefied. Oh my God. But the smell was horrendous. Oh. So we could be looking forward to that somewhere down the line. Change your mind on bottle bricks? I see the work has moved to the inside. Obviously, you probably don't want to be painting uh, in the dark. In the dark, in the cold, dark night. Yeah. So how does it feel working with this paint? This is my first time using glass paint. Yes, yes. I was so. kind of nervous about it. Uh, how does it feel? I'm enjoying it. Any special learning curve with this or does it go on pretty fine? It's pretty easy. Um, 
thing is it's kind of translucent so it has a little bit of a different feel than some other kinds of paints but it's not too hard to use Crew's excited about all your work over here. All right, we got a score. Thanks to a friend of ours, we got some uh, more bottles. We'll definitely be able to put these to you soon. And we got the mother load of cans. Look at that, look at that, look at that. We were in need of some new cans and uh, she definitely came through for us. This will be more than enough for uh, to get us through. Mm -hmm. And Crew wants to get out of the back of the Tahoe. Crew, you want to get out of here? Come on. Oh, look at that. So much better with the stairs than he was the first couple times. All right, now he's got to use the bathroom, I'm sure. Man, I'm excited about the extra bottles and the cans. So, uh, you know, a big thank you to our friend Julie. Uh, that is amazing. Thank you, Julie. Thank you. <laughs> uh, a lot of cans. We're definitely going to be able to uh, utilize those. That'll. We're all ready for the next dome build. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so it's been about 24 hours since we painted that glass. Not quite, but pretty close. As you can see, Jess has already got the glass laid out on the grill. What's the temp we're supposed to put this glass at? I think it's 325. Oh, Jess doesn't even know. Okay, 325. So we basically need to bake this at uh, 325 degrees for 40 minutes. So it's going to be way too dark by the time this is cooking to uh, show you, but we'll bring you back in the morning and uh, we'll show you how this glass turns out. I'm kind of excited. All right, so we put the glass in there last night. We were cooking it for about 325 degrees for 40 minutes. It's in there longer while well, the glass is still in there, but yeah, you know, we didn't want to heat it up too quickly, so we didn't put it in there right at 325 degrees. We let the glass kind of warm up with the Traeger, uh, and then we also let it kind of cool down with the Traeger. And then uh, it's just been sitting there overnight. And uh, this morning, it got to even below freezing. I think the lowest it got was like 26 degrees. So uh, let's see how everything looks. Oh, I think these turned out magnificently. All right, so it's still kind of cold this morning. I know Jess doesn't want to be out here yet. So I'm going to bring all this glass inside. We'll uh, tape them and glue them up inside. And then by that time, it should be a little warmer. And then we can start uh, putting them in the south window there. So while Jess is busy in here prepping these bottles, I'm going to go out head outside and uh, take care of some of the chores I need to get done out there. So we're using this clear Gorilla Tape. And that tape seems to be pretty good. I think probably better than your regular packaging tape, would you say? Yeah, that's really strong. I took a couple small pieces and put it on there just to hold it where I want it. And I flip it on its side and then just roll it on. It's pretty easy. And it feels really firm. Mm -hmm. And now I have to figure out how to do these. <laughs> what exactly are you trying to do with them? Uh, well, I'm going to tape these plates together. Uh-oh, it's for microwave oven only. Not for natural building? No. Mm. Do they have to be taped together? Well, yeah, because they're going to be stacked. So Jess is almost done taping up them bottles, taping up them plates. 
So now I'm gonna get out here and I'm gonna make up some cob quick. I really feel like that's a kind of a small window and there's gonna be a lot of bottles in there. So I feel like we won't need too much cob. I'm gonna make a full mix and we'll see where that gets us. If I need to, I can always make another mix real quick. Doesn't take too long. Okay, so we're bringing out the bottles now? Yeah. And then you still have your template here. So this is gonna be kind of important when we're figuring out what goes where on the bottle window, right? Yeah. Let's get one shot of the design here before it all goes in. All right, do you know what we're doing or how to begin? No. <laughs> <laughs> I've been kind of curious, y'all, you might be kind of curious, now that we opened up a hole to the underground earth bag bedroom, is it drying out? Uh, how are the temperatures down there with that hole in there? I'm kind of excited, I already know, but, uh, let, but I'm gonna take you down there, we'll go check it out. Your spider friend is still down there. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we need to get her out of here. We can see the uh, temperature and the humidity down here from the trailer, which is kind of cool. It's uh, 48.4. What was the temperature this morning? The temperature this morning was... 26. Yeah, it got down to about 26 degrees. And the lowest it ever got in here was 47. Even with the hole in the floor, the temperatures are still stable and it's drying out a little bit. If I took off some of those boards, I might dry it out a little quicker, but uh, I think it'll do it eventually on its own. That's a pretty slick idea. That way, you can carry the cob up there with you, right? Yeah. I'll have to keep climbing <laughs> up and down on a ladder. I like that there's a sledge right here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go work on the chores you gave me. You're like, pick up the mess. I'll pick up the mess. This is gonna look amazing when it's done. <laughs> what? Uh oh, you're on camera. Don't be a bad boy. Oh, he's a good boy. He's like, how dare you do things besides giving me attention? Oh, 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 should I even put this on camera or should I wait to the end? So was this process a little easier, a little harder than you thought? Oh. Or exactly how you thought it would be? I don't think it was about how I thought it would be, but okay. I enjoyed okay. it. Yeah, yeah, it was fun. One of the most fun parts of the build so far, I think. Mm -hmm. Oh, I like what you're doing there. What do you got there for a tool? <laughs> it's a pallet knife. Hey, whatever works, right? I guess. Some uh, advantages to being an artist out here doing this. We, uh, I mean, we don't have like plast really decent plastering tools right now, but this works. I guess it might be something we might want to invest in down the road, but hey, we'll use what works, right? What we have. I think that does a really fine job, getting into those tight spaces. That's a really good idea. You being a good boy? Huh? You being a good boy? Busted. I knew where you were at. Trying to hide from me? You inspecting? Ready to leave? Yes. All right, and how do you like your stand? This should be good. <laughs> <laughs> now, and how is it working temperature-wise from the outside versus the inside? That's <laughs> a lot cooler. And uh, out there you probably had the sun beating on your back, eh? Yeah, that's getting hot, actually. 
I feel like you're making a pretty good amount of progress in a short amount of time. So while Jess is putting the bottles in and pretty much taking care of that first cob window, I am going to sift some dirt. So we quickly discovered that uh, rocks in the cob mix maybe not so good for this particular instance. Rocks might be good for the outside or building walls, but uh, for here, uh, probably as few rocks as possible. So I'm gonna do some sifting, so I'll be ready to go if we need more cob mix. Of course, now we know, lesson learned, when we're making a cob mix for this, for like the bottle windows, sort out those rocks. Back to shoveling again. I thought I might have been done with this for the foreseeable future. Fucking fabulous. I see where you're going for that. And to get that kind of thin bottle layer, it really is kind of tricky, eh? Yeah, I think you almost need something like this. I think like screening out the rocks will really help. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. Crew realizes we have company. All right, y'all, so uh, we got some uh, guests rolling on in. Probably gonna have to take a break right now. Gonna uh, spend some time with uh, the guests and uh, we will uh, we'll catch you guys when we come back. All right, we're back at it, right? Back at it. You got yep. the last of the bottles, you're ready to put in the last of them, huh? Yep. It's going by uh, fairly quickly, surprisingly. Yep. Well, I guess it's a tidy window. It's <laughs> pretty small. We'll see how the other ones go. I think that uh, the bottle paint really opens up create a lot of creative possibilities. You know, I think the colored bottles are nice and you can use them, you know, depending on what you got and stuff like that, but now you're not limited to that. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, it's hard to find different colors with colored bottles. And some of those uh, colored bottles can be kind of opaque. And I feel like this might even let in more light while still giving you yeah. uh, a little bit of color. Mm -hmm. The bottle paint was kind of like a little extra step and that took a little bit longer. Yep. So like, just keep in mind if you're thinking about using bottle paint, if you're like, oh, hey, that's an interesting idea. It definitely adds a little bit more time to it. So like, instead of just cutting the bottles, taping it, sticking them in there, obviously then you gotta paint it, wait for that to dry for 24 hours, and then, and then cook it, it, and then bake it. Yeah, there's kinds you can buy that, where you don't have to bake it, but I wanted a higher quality paint, and this makes it weatherproof and really strong, so I think it'll be good. I think those are gonna do well in there, nestled in their little cob spaces. I think so far this might be the uh, most fun part of the build. Yeah. What do you think? I think so. Was it fun for you? Oh or yeah. Did I do the fun parts? Well, you always usually get to do the fun <laughs> parts, but it's fun for me to support doing the fun parts. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't mind doing a little sho shoveling or cod mixing to get these end results. See, Jess, you might get to make the magic, but I get to support the magic making. So, every little thing we do is magic. Why didn't we just throw in like a couple panes of glass? I mean, we probably could have maybe gotten some glass and maybe cut it ourselves to size. People mentioned plexiglass. So why glass bottles? We got all these bottles for free. You know, we're not big drinkers either. What? <laughs> Maybe a few are from us, but a lot uh, of them were just donated to us. Yeah, we didn't empty all these bottles, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, so the cost, that's a big bonus, but also it gives some insulation. I mean, that's like six inches thick of uh, glass right there. Yeah, probably more insulation than the conventional window that it's sitting on. I think that one is, more energy efficient, it's like a double pane It's a double window. pane window. Oh uh, yeah, I mean, six, uh, they got that six inch pocket of air in there, plus surrounded by the cob, yeah. yeah. And I think it's just a fun, creative 
way to let in some light into the house. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's gonna provide plenty of light. I wasn't sure at first, but uh, I think when we get these, uh, you know, the utilization of not only those bottles, but those microwave plates, mm -hmm. the possibilities are endless. Oh, here it is, the finish line. So just needs a little bit more cob. I'm just gonna get a little bit more mixed. This might even be too much right here. It's just a shovel full of dirt, a little bit of straw. I'll mix it up real quick. That way she doesn't run out. Special cob delivering, ma'am. <laughs> Where's my tip? <laughs> the nice thing about using the cob versus like if we were using cement or something, like we could just wipe off <laughs> any of the mud that gets onto the glass pretty easily, yeah. even yeah. after it dries. Yeah, now with, uh, if we're making a mess over here, we'll just take a cloth, sponge or something, and wipe it down. Oh, we got it done, y'all. Well, she got it done. We got it done. <laughs> I couldn't have done it without you. Oh, it would have taken you a little bit longer, but I think you could have. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't sure about this whole process, but I think it looks amazing. Yeah, I mean, you uh, had the bottle paint idea. I was like, okay, that's interesting. And then when you're kind of putting it on, I was like, oh, I don't know, I'm not sure about that. But uh, seeing them in place like that, ah. Oh. Seeing the light go through that. That's gorgeous. Now this is just the practice. Cause we got much larger windows coming up. Now we did the small one. Now we're gonna do the medium one coming up next. And then of course the large Gothic window. And I actually have some different techniques in mind for these other windows. So oh. we'll see how that plays out. Stay tuned for that. Quick fun project, getting that uh, south window done. Now it's all all done. Yeah. Maybe a little bit left in the, in the inside, but pretty much it's done. Of course, we're gonna get bigger, you ready? Mm -hmm. All right, y'all, we'll catch you on that next video. Bye. You ready to go inside? Huh? You had enough of it out here? Let's go. Right up.